Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Sarah Labratt and today we are going to be talking about five more common writing mistakes I see as a freelance book editor. This is kind of a part two because I do already have another video up about some common mistakes that I see in my freelance book editing, but today we're gonna to be talking about five more. If you go on to enjoy this video or learn something from it, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up because that really supports my channel by telling the YouTube algorithm that you liked my video and that somebody else might too. And now without further ado, let's get into talking about these five common writing mistakes. The first common writing mistake we're going to be talking about today is about narration and description. I have noticed in several of the novels that I have edited that there is often a lot of narration and telling what is going on, but often not very much showing what is going on through description. And yes, in the last video that I made about writing mistakes, I did touch on showing and not telling, but this is a little bit different. Often the purpose of narration is telling the reader what is going on. However, sometimes that can get lofty if it's just like, oh, they did this and then they did this and then this happened and whatever. And that often kind of seems to like drift off and away from the story, but you can actually ground your reader by using concrete description. And concrete description is anything that involves the five senses to bring that story back down. So in order to ground some of those narrative things into more of a concrete description, you can use things like sight, touch, smell, hearing, and taste to ground those descriptions into much more beneficial, understandable things for the reader that keeps them involved in the story. The second common writing mistake I'm going to be talking about today is that it feels like in the stories that I read, more often than not, the writers tend to shy away from emotion and internal conflict. Like yes, it's very fun to see two characters interacting and talking and everything, but if there's no internal thought process and no emotion about things that are going on in the story, it can make a character or even the story in like the worst case scenarios feel flat because it doesn't feel like the character has any dimension to them because they don't have feelings or internal conflict or dialogue. The third common writing mistake we're going to be talking about is formatting and when to start a new paragraph. Everything that I'm talking about in these videos are things that I point out when I'm going through and editing somebody's novel or chapter, but I thought that it would be beneficial for me to mention these things. So when to start a new paragraph. New ideas should always start in new paragraphs. However, if you have an idea or a point that spans multiple paragraphs, each new point within that same idea should have its own paragraph. Every time a new character starts speaking or somebody responds to something, it should always be in a new paragraph so that there is only only one speaker per paragraph. You can also use paragraph breaks to emphasize a moment or a point or something that somebody said, almost for dramatic effect, and then whenever there is a change in time or place. And then as far as formatting goes beyond this, for most published novels, every first line of a paragraph should be indented, and it's often a lot harder to read if it isn't. Common writing mistake number four, said is not dead. I'm gonna explain both sides of this because I've seen both, but it seems like on one hand, people will say said and only said, even when there's a question or something should be asked or murmured or whatever, it's always said, which I have some respect for, but there's also the other side of the spectrum that is where the said is not dead thing comes in because there are some stories that will only use a dialogue tag if it is not said. So that's murmured, whispered, shouted, yelled, bellowed, whatever. Everything that isn't said. I think that there is a very happy middle ground between these two extremes because not every single word doesn't need to be said and not every single word needs to be said. So with that, I think that when somebody is asking a question, it is important to use asked or questioned or something along those lines instead of said. And I think it's important to understand that most readers will just skim over the word said. And so if you actually want to draw attention to how something is said, that's when you can use one of the other other, more slightly creative words. So now that we've talked a little bit about formatting and paragraphs and dialogue tags, let's get into common writing mistake number five, which is the lovely punctuation. Yes, I feel like this is a very talked about topic. However, hear me out because I have three things within this one point. The first one being exclamation points. Exclamation points can be exhausting to your reader if it is used too frequently. That being said, I did read something somewhere, I don't remember when or where, but that recommends ended something like one exclamation point if you choose to use exclamation points in every roughly thousand words. And it was recommending that so that it wasn't more often than that. I don't think that this is necessarily a super strict rule, but it is something good to keep in mind that an exclamation point, if used too frequently, can draw your reader out of the story. In my personal experience, I have noticed that if I'm using an exclamation point, it's often because I didn't word the dialogue tag strongly enough to support the end of the quotation being a comma or a period. So 
from my personal experience and something that I just have to rewrite because originally it wasn't written very strongly. Something else I've noticed with exclamation points specifically is that sometimes people use a question mark and then an exclamation point or even two exclamation points to really try to get the point across. You only need one punctuation mark. And so either choose a question mark or one exclamation point because whatever the point is of using multiple exclamation points or multiple punctuation marks in general can often be fixed with rewording something else. The second thing within number five is quotation punctuation. There are a couple different ways to punctuate any kind of quotation you might have, but here's a couple of the main ones. If you have a quotation with a dialogue tag at the end of it, and the quotation itself is a complete sentence or a complete thought, and you would end that by itself in a period, you would then end that in a comma, quotation mark, lowercase, he or she said or whatever, because the dialogue tag is technically a continuation of the sentence that just kind of explains how it is portrayed. And the same thing if you're ending a quotation in an exclamation point or a question mark, you can leave those in there as long as then the he or she said is lowercase. If it's somebody's name, obviously you leave that uppercase. However, if you do this the other way and you put the dialogue tag first, you capitalize he or she said, comma, quotation mark, uppercase of whatever that next letter is, and then you continue on writing your sentence. And then there's the slightly trickier having the dialogue tag in the middle of the quotation, because there's two ways that you can do that. You can either do it the first way that we talked about and have it be the quotation, comma, quotation mark, lowercase, he or she said, period, or comma. But if you put a period, then it's another quotation mark, and then you just start a new sentence with a capital letter. But if you choose to put a comma because it's the continuation of the thought of the previous quotation, then the next letter within that next quotation mark needs to be lowercase because it is all one continuous sentence. And the third part of this fifth writing mistake is commas and the Oxford comma. But more than that, it's comma inconsistencies. I have read several novels that will use the Oxford comma in some areas, but not in others. And whether you choose to use the Oxford comma or not, I personally am a fan of the Oxford comma. Just just be consistent with it throughout the entire story or whatever you are writing. And those are the five common writing mistakes I'm talking about today. If you would like to work with me, I will leave a link down below because I offer chapter and short story critiques and edits, as well as full manuscript critiques and edits. And so I will leave both of those links down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still here and have not hit that thumbs up button yet, you definitely should because you clearly liked the video to be here this long. And make sure you subscribe because I'm currently posting two videos a week on Mondays and Thursdays, and I'm Sarah the bot and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!